New on AM Extra, a new campaign in Oregon is hoping to end the stigma when it comes to substance addiction. For years, officials have raised the alarm over Oregon's untreated addiction problem, calling it a public health crisis. Now two organizations are partnering up to try and reduce the shame for those who are suffering. Joining us in studio this morning to talk about the launch of the new campaign is Tony Vizina, Executive Director of 4D Recovery. Tony, good morning. Thanks for being here. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So first, let's kind of talk about 4D Recovery recovery and this new partnership that you have with CARE Oregon. Sure, yeah, 4D Recovery uh, is a recovery organization serving young people. A recovery organization is an organization that hires people in recovery like me. I've been in recovery uh, coming up on 11 years. And we go out and we help other people get in recovery, motivate them. Um, and then many people know what CARE Oregon is, CCO, administers Medicaid benefit. Uh, they've been a really great partner um, in providing funds to a lot of different organizations that are recovery orgs, doing innovative work. Um, you know, and we at 4D know that one of the major barriers to um, seeking treatment and recovery services is the stigma. Mm -hmm. And so this campaign has three main objectives. One is to just demonstrate that substance use disorder, what people commonly think of as addiction, affects everybody. Race, creed, religion, none of that matters, right? Socioeconomic status, none of that matters. Uh, so we want to show that. We want to show that. Um, you know, recovery happens, it's real, I'm a product of recovery. Oregonians want to fund treatment, recovery services, right, but we don't always get to see the investment, mm -hmm. right, the return on investment. So we want to highlight stories of recovery. And then lastly, we want to help encourage people to seek treatment and services through our campaign. You know, uh, most families have a family member or a close friend who is going through this struggle. So where do you think the stigma comes from, especially when most of us have had personal experiences with it? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things about substance use disorder is that, you know, it is a, you know, a brain disease, right? But it exemplifies itself in behaviors. And oftentimes, like me, when I was using, my behaviors impacted other people. Right, so I think that's where the stigma comes from. It's associated with those behaviors, right? And historically, people have viewed um, substance use disorder as more of a moral failing, mm -hmm. and you know, didn't look so much at the science. But now there's pretty broad consensus that it can be treated uh, relatively effectively. Um, and so we're just challenging people, like, hey, it's okay to have a problem. It's okay to get help. Lots of us recover. Yeah. So we're uplifting a lot of different stories of recovery. Well, there's also that, that school of thought where the, the opposite of addiction is community, right? right. That, that isolation can often come along with addiction. So how does that play into that stigma and, and make it so hard to sometimes find that help? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, so like I said, like people who get addicted oftentimes kind of have these odd behaviors. They hurt the people around them, right? And that's kind of where that isolation comes from. Yeah. And so what we want to do is show that there are tons of people recovering. There's all sorts of different communities that recover and we're here to help. You know, if you need that connection, we're here to connect you and be a bridge. Tell us a little bit about your personal story. Uh, what was your uh, drug of choice and, and how tough was it to recover from it? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I liked to party when I was young and uh, like a lot of my friends. And the thing that happened to me is, you know, in the early 2000s, there was a ton of Oxycontins that kind of flooded the market. Yeah, I'm sure you guys, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I started using those, uh, became addicted, and then the supply uh, was taken away. A doctor got in trouble in Vancouver, Washington. And so this big supply of Oxys all of a sudden disappeared and then heroin replaced it. Mm. And so I started using heroin and, you know, I used heroin until I was 27. I was homeless. I used other drugs too, but it was primarily heroin. But you know, it, it was it's hard to get off heroin because of the physical withdrawal. Mm -hmm. You get right. so sick and so you need it to function. Right, right. And to be you said 11 years now into yeah. your recovery journey, that's fantastic. And, yeah. and to have made a, a 180 in your life and to be able to share that story and show others that that, that is, a, is an outcome um, is fantastic. For someone working in recovery, to have Care Oregon come into this partnership, what is that going to do for, for your ability to help people? Uh, well, it's really going to expand our reach. Um, you guys may or may not know, you know, there was a recent study done by the Oregon Health Science University in conjunction with the Alcohol and Drug Policy Commission, which I'm the chair of, and we looked at what is the gap in treating substance use disorder in Oregon. And across prevention, treatment, recovery, we are 49 percent under yeah. capacity across the state. So having people like Care Oregon come in and help is going to, you know, help us take the next step. I also think you guys are here 
you know, and historically the media coverage of addiction has really been on the problem, right? Focused but today problem, we're talking right? about, you know, the solution and what right. happens. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you know, we have a, a governor who said that behavioral health, that's addiction and mental health together, mm -hmm. is one of her top three priorities and she's committed to it. So I think we are positioned in a really, really good spot to address the issue. To be able to really turn a corner. Yeah, I yeah. think so. How can people get involved? Yeah, people can go to our website, www.4drecovery.org. Uh, they can look at one of our fundraising pages, Shatter the Stigma. Uh, they can look at the stories. They can take a pledge. We're asking people to pledge and fundraise uh, for our adolescent treatment program. Uh, there's hardly any adolescent services in Oregon, and so we're asking for help from the public to raise funds. Uh, we'll be opening up uh, on July 7th of this year. That's Great. fantastic. Well, as you mentioned, Tony, we, we talk a lot about the problem, and, right. and we mm -hmm. want to be part of the conversation for those solutions. Thank you for sharing your story and being part of that today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And if you want to learn more about 4D Recovery, their anti-stigma campaign, and how you can get involved with 4D in Care Oregon, head to the organization's website. It's 4drecovery.org. Time now is 740, and up next on AM Extra, an epic Weekend awaits in Ridgefield, Washington. We're talking about barbecue. That's right. Bringing the heat. You're taking a live look at Alan A Casino. After the break, Core explores a weekend of flame grill goodness. We'll be right back.